Okay, so three weeks ago I made a video about the Facebook page A Science Enthusiast, and to my tremendous surprise, the man behind the page actually contacted me in the comments. So let's have a look at what he had to say. Hey there, glad to hear you agree that vaccines work and GMOs are safe. I'd like to have you on my podcast to talk about the issues you raised in your video. It seems you have multiple areas where you either misrepresent or misunderstand my views. You can reach me at dan at ascienceenthusiast.com to discuss the details. Smiley face. I respond... I am very much interested. Perhaps I'll be free sometime next week. Now, as you see in the comments below, he's already saying I won't respond, and he and his idiot fanboys are already declaring victory. He obviously has no intention of ever honoring his offer. Meanwhile, he posted my video on a Facebook page of his, where he says, A fun way to spend five minutes of your day is to count how many logical fallacies deflating atheism engages in here while doing a deflate of me. A drinking game version would be to take a shot every time a logical fallacy is used, selection bias, confirmation bias, straw man, just outright lying about what I think, say, and more. How many did you count? Smiley face. Now, I think it's worthwhile to note that of all these supposed logical fallacies he rattles off, selection bias, confirmation bias, lying, etc., not one of them, not a single one of them, is actually a formal logical fallacy. But hey, at least you tried. Now that week was crazy for me. In addition to several appointments I already had, I was trying to keep my schedule open for someone else, and then my car stopped working and I needed to fix that. Nonetheless, on Friday of that week, I sent him an email offering to chat that evening. I sent him a follow-up email offering to chat on Tuesday or Wednesday. Naturally, he responded to neither of these emails. Nonetheless, he found it fit to dedicate 20 minutes of his podcast to me, and not giving me any opportunity to respond to him, this video will be my response to him, and oh boy, it's gonna be beautiful. There's a guy on YouTube and Facebook and uh, uh, his on Patreon. He has, he has his two followers on Patreon. I see. I, I, I can't be that big of a dick. Don't I can't be. be that big of a dick. No, no. He he just he's just a guy like checking out the other content available on the Internet and, you know, pointing out the flaws. <laughs> It just, he just, he's, do, he's doing his thing. Which is exhausting uh, and, and so original. Uh, it's hard to do things like, it's hard to sit back and just say, no, uh, but you know what? Somebody's uh, got to do it. Praise the law Somebody's that deflating atheism is, is there for us. And this past week, uh, I just happened to be his target. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, so I got taken down uh, in this video. We'll put the link in the notes. It's only five minutes long, so it's uh, <laughs> pretty quick and easy, not that bad. Uh, but he, uh, the thesis is that uh, skeptic pages uh, like mine and, and Natalie's are uh, they're purely just to poison the well. We share all these things like uh, vaccines work, anti-vaxxers are ridiculous people, GMOs are safe, all these things that have lots of evidence supporting them. Yeah. And then we sprinkle in uh, some anti-religion things or pro-atheism things so that, you know, religion looks silly and by by association uh no my point was a little stronger than that you were simply trying to make christianity look silly by association my point was that you were trying to give the false impression that christianity and theism are things that can be scientifically disproven and that your anti-christian content has no business being on a facebook page supposedly dedicated to science i invited him on our show uh, i said hey you know glad to hear you agree with us about uh, you know, vaccines being safe and GMOs being safe. Uh, you know, why don't you come on our show and we can talk about all the way, all like the mental hoops that you're jumping through to get, get to the conclusions that you're making and all the logical fallacies you're engaging in. And if, if who, whomever this individual is, is listening, uh, because apparently he's a big fan, <laughs> the biggest. Uh, this is a primer <laughs> on like how to prepare to come on our show to get, you know, I don't want to say eviscerated, but we'll say de we'll def deflate, deflate, deflate again. Oh, wow. Mr. I have no fucking clue what a logical fallacy is, says he's going to deflate me, and then completely bitches out on his offer. Big surprise, right? He was so thorough, he went back like, you know, five days <laughs> in page posts. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing. It was just like, uh, so we have, I'm going to show you the content. Bias. Yeah. And then he, he, chose, he chose to show posts that uh, confirmed his own bias his own personal bias so we have you know another fallacy we're engaging in uh 
Uh, yes, I went back five days in page post because I wanted to get a representative sampling of the topics addressed on your page. I assemble these topics into a table at the end of my video. Now, do you feel if this table of topics was somehow unrepresentative or unfair? You give no indication that it is, but if it's not unfair, your entire complaint is void. If my selection was biased, what was my selection criteria? Again, you give no indication. Now, I couldn't have included everything posted on your page within the space of five days, because then my video would have been very long and boring. So instead, I selected posts in order to avoid redundancy. The fact that I select things does not make it a selection bias. That's not the way selection bias works, you fucking moron. He says that I deny the existence of Jesus in the first place, so we have a straw man fallacy, because I've... You posted a cartoon that said Jesus wasn't real, so I assumed that was indicative of your beliefs. Just as when you post a meme graphic that says vaccines don't cause autism, I assume that's indicative of your beliefs as well. The straw man fallacy does not cover my failure to be a fucking mind reader, you fucking moron. There's some question that Jesus may have not existed. Please provide your source for this claim. I'm going to take my ethos here from the about page of a science enthusiast where it says all claims require sources. So you claim that there's some historical question as to whether Jesus existed. Please provide your sources for that claim. Incidentally, I've never seen this guy provide any source for any of his anti-Christian claims. To me, it's not even worth arguing because there's yeah. some evidence, so... Sure, I'll let you have that one, because uh, that's not even my problem. I don't even care. He's if, like, check uh, me. If, if Jesus existed. Yeah, right. Uh, I don't even care if Jesus existed or not. Like, sure, there's a guy named Jesus from Nazareth. Why not? Go for it. Okay, you'll grant the point now. That still means that you promulgated historical fictions in order to pander to atheists. Because we all know atheists basically want to feel like they hold some clandestine wisdom over the heads of the religious so you will promote long discredited nonsense in order to make atheists feel good about themselves, in order to get those likes, because you have no fucking regard for the truth. But there's so many other like holes that religion steps in on its way to trying to prove itself to be something that is logical, reasonable, and makes any semblance of sense that I'll let you have that win. You can have that victory. You got it. Jesus Jesus was a person, but, but a person. Okay. He was not God. Please provide your sources for this claim. Yeah. I mean, like really, he this guy this guy tried. I just think it's sort of cute that there is a like attempt of a, you know, YouTube takedown video of you. Like it's funny. I know. Like I just like I just think I it's I think it's kind of, you know, aw, like that. And this is this is this is the first one. I'm yeah. sure there's the first one I'm aware of, at least. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's uh, skyrocketing to the front page of YouTube with 376 views as of this recording. OK, so now he's taking the high road and mocking the number of views my video got. So let's take a look at the juggernaut that is the Science Enthusiast podcast channel. <laughs> Atheism are committing the logical fallacy of argumentum and selection bias fallacy with the confirmation and the lying and the flame and then the And we would love to to welcome this gentleman on to um, have a conversation with us. Yeah, and I I'm sure he'll be on the same episode that like Ken Ham joins us on. Like it's about right, as likely. Right, probably. exactly. Well at least at least he responded. He said, I am very much interested. Perhaps I'll be free sometime next week. Uh, when I very clearly said, "Hey, here's my email address. Email me because I don't, uh, I don't, I don't like YouTube." Hang out I didn't in YouTube put that comments. There, but, yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. I didn't email you at the time because I wasn't sure what date I could commit to. I think I made that fairly clear at the time, but now I have emailed you. It's become apparent that you never had any intention of ever having me on the podcast. So collect that victory, you weaselly little lying piece of shit. I, I didn't know who this was. Actually, uh, I got a shout out to uh, the, the blog Godless Engineer. Oh, uh, yes. Godless Engineer, another atheist dimwit who loves tossing out the names of non-applicable logical fallacies, hoping it makes him sound smart and, of course, falling flat on his face. Uh, for bringing this video to my attention in the first place. And he also brought another video to my attention of uh, deflating atheism. Uh, I believe it's called hacking atheism. He uses the argument that... North Koreans and Russians and like 
back in the day, or I guess North Korea, maybe even now, view their leaders as a god, mm -hmm. as evidence of, well, gods exist. I'm not making any part of that up. That's yeah. You're making all of it up, you fucking moron. Here's the clip from the video in question. Now, atheists often bring up atrocities committed by Christians throughout history, so you can bring up atrocities committed by atheists throughout history. More importantly, atrocities committed by atheists with the objective of eliminating religious belief, and you can use the USSR and North Korea as examples. Now, the scripted atheist response is that the USSR and North Korea were never really atheists, and that in Stalinist USSR, Stalin was God, and the North Koreans have a national religion called Jush, of course, all atheists are experts in North Korean culture, naturally. The North Koreans have a national religion called Jush, wherein Kim Il-sung is their god. So you can respond to this very simply by saying, are these the gods you claim there's no evidence for? Because there's pretty good historical evidence that Joseph Stalin and Kim Il-sung existed. I was taking the atheist claim that the crimes of North Korea are done in the name of God, since Kim Il-sung is their god, that's the atheist claim by the way, not mine, and turning it against the other atheist claim that there is no evidence for God. So that was my argument, you were just too stupid to comprehend it. Do they get, they get like a point for effort, I guess, but I, it's just, it's... A failure on all their levels, but you tried. You tried. You're such an airhead. You're so dumb. You were too stupid to realize that literally everything Dan was saying was horseshit, so you've lost the right to condescend to me, okay? You want a quote? Uh, yeah, hit us with a quote. The good thing about science is that it's true whether or not you believe in it. Neil deGrasse Tyson. This quote is missing something, I just can't quite put my finger on it. Oh, I know, it needs stock footage of an airplane from Criminal Minds. The good thing about science is that it's true whether or not you believe in it. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Now this quote is what Daniel Dennett would call a deepity. It is meaningful and inspiring and significant to stupid people. Yes, scientific facts are true whether or not you believe them, but that's true of anything that's true. God's existence is true whether or not you believe in him. So the quote does not give preference to any particular set of ideas, it's completely vacuous. Which is pretty much par for the course for any Neil deGrasse Tyson quote. Introducing the new Little Caesars Extra Most Bestest Pizza, a large pizza with the most cheese and the most pepperoni at the nation's best price. Oh yes, this is a sponsor-supported podcast. Do you want to hear more of the sponsors who are supporting this podcast? Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Tonight's episode of the Science Enthusiast podcast is brought to you by KFC's pizza made with a fried chicken crust. Because you know what? We're already all dying anyways. Like, that's a real thing. And this is the kind of blasphemous content these sponsors are supporting. I am actively choosing to talk about things that have to do with, like, you know, Jesus ejaculating and eating it. Congratulations, guys. Hope you boned without Jesus watching. But Jesus is always watching, isn't he? He's like Santa uh, for adults, for, for real. Like, he sees you when you're sleeping. He sees you when you're banging. So please write into Little Caesars and KFC and Geico and tell them that you will not be supporting their businesses as long as they support this kind of blasphemy. Uh, links are in the description. So I uh, hope you enjoy this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. And God bless America!